Hello, good morning everyone. This is Pankaj Kedia. I run the wearable business at Qualcomm. Um, let me talk about the last couple of platforms that we launched and then talk about the upcoming platform. So we, we formed the wearable business at Qualcomm almost four years ago. Two years ago, we launched the Snapdragon Wear 2100 platform. Snapdragon Wear 2100 platform was used both in smartwatches and kid watches. Uh, we have had a very good run with 2100 over the last two years. Uh, but now it is time to move to the next platforms. 45 days ago at MWC Shanghai, we launched Snapdragon Wear 2500. Snapdragon Wear 2500 is an Android-based wearable platform which we are primarily targeting for the kid watch segment. You know, the kid watches are transitioning from 2G to 4G. As they are transitioning from 2G to 4G, they are becoming a messaging platform. They're becoming a learning platform. They're becoming a gaming platform. They're becoming a fitness platform. And um, as this transition happens, messaging, gaming, learning, fitness requires a lot of performance while maintaining low power. So 2500 is a dedicated platform for kid watches. Uh, the first products based on 2500 are coming later this year. Over the last year, we also launched Snapdragon Wear 1100 platform. That's a Cat 1, Cat 4 platform for smart trackers. And we launched Snapdragon Wear 1200. That's a Cat M1 narrowband IoT platform, also for smart trackers. Now we are getting ready to announce our next platform called Snapdragon Wear 3100. This is our next generation platform for smartwatches. It is based on a new ultra low power system architecture um, running Wear OS. We have worked very closely with Google to optimize the, to optimize the experience um, hardware and software working well together. Uh, so a little bit about the platform. Uh, the new low power system architecture is based on a hierarchical approach. At the top, the big processor, we have quad core A7s, which are very powerful. The small is the integrated DSP in the main baseband, very efficient. And then we created a new ground-up design. Uh, we call it a low-power coprocessor, QCC1110. That's the tiny uh, processor in this hierarchy. I actually have the QCC1110, the coprocessor. It is incredibly tiny, yet quite powerful. Um, it is designed for low power. We have custom RAM. We have um, low power near threshold voltage at 0.6 volt. Uh, we really designed it from the ground up for low power operation. On the performance side, we have one megabyte memory. We have a machine learning engine integrated that makes it possible to do custom workloads like keyword detection and other functionality over time. So um, the, the main engine and this coprocessor, they work in concert to deliver a more um, intuitive smartwatch experience. Uh, let me summarize the benefits you will see 
uh, in smartwatches based on 3100. So first, you will get a rich interactive mode. The rich interactive mode is a function of the foundation we bring to the table with a powerful AP, a rich multimedia and graphics engine, very robust modem and a series of other new features. This foundation along with the new Wear OS features will make the interactive experience uh, more fun, more fluid, more responsive. That's one. Number two, we are enabling a series of targeted experiences. Let me give you some examples. The first example would be how the watch looks in ambient mode when you're not interacting with it. So today, generally a smartwatch uh, does not look as fashionable. It's generally black and white, generally does not have a second hand, no color, no complications. Actually, in some cases, the watch is black. What we are doing is using this big, small, tiny architecture, we are offloading sensors and display to the coprocessor. So in ambient mode, you are running the ambient mode, the watch face, on the coprocessor and you're keeping the main processor sleeping. As a result, the ambient mode becomes much richer. It now has color. It has a smooth second hand. It is brighter. And you can have multiple complications. So your watch looks more and more like a watch. It, it brings fashion and technology together. The second example of dedicated mode is uh, the sports mode. So we are bringing a number of sports-like features. So your smartwatch, your smartwatch feels like a sports watch. Uh, based on our calculations, um, using a typical sports watch battery, you can do up to 15 hour battery life with GPS and heart rate running. Uh, when you go for a run, or when you go for a swim, or when you go for a hike, or when you go for a bike. So that is creating increased interest in the platform from many of the sports names. Last, we are bringing a new traditional watch mode. Your watch can go in the traditional watch mode um, if you forget to bring your charger, for example. So for the first day, you are enjoying the rich Wear OS experience and for the rest of the week you can be in traditional watch mode still carrying the beautiful watch still having your custom watch face and um, it, it goes on for a week so a rich interactive experience series of rich personalized experiences and last but not the least, given the new architecture, we are making very good improvements in power and battery life. So a typical user um, can use their watch anywhere between 1.5 to 2.5 days using standard batteries. Um, and you get maybe 4 hour to 12 hour additional battery life compared to the previous Snapdragon Wear 2100 generation. Of course, I talked about the 15-hour sports mode and the week-long uh, mode where part of the time you are in Wear OS and part of the time you are um, in the traditional watch mode. Last but not the least, we are working with a series of customers. Um, we are planning to announce a handful of them at launch and we expect to have uh, some of these devices shipping in time for the holidays. Thank you very much. Bye.